right good morning good morning good morning friends good morning this is Diane and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement truly it is another word from the Lord and I just want to give God thanks today for the opportunity to be able to come to you like this I give him thanks for technology I give him thanks for just the way he has allowed us to connect over the past months uh, moving into I guess <laughs> years you know I just want to give God thanks today I want to thank him for his goodness to us I want to thank him for the fact that he has created beauty all around us and within this natural beauty that I'm sharing with you today you know for those who uh, don't know this is a view of the road harbor in Tortola British Virgin Islands and I'm blessed to be able to uh, behold this every single morning because you see the mercies of God they are new every morning and every day he has given us a chance you know to just give him thanks and praise for those things that he has provided for us we cannot take anything for granted friends you know and i just want to give god thanks today for this opportunity i thank him also and you could consider this our opening prayer because sometimes we just need to give god thanks just give him thanks you know we don't need a bunch of fancy words and you know a fancy posture yes there are times when we will kneel before him you know we will bow before him we will even lay pros prostrate before him but this is just me giving God thanks right now I want to thank him for bringing us over into a brand new month a brand new month today is the second day of July 2019 and many of us never even knew we would have seen this day but because of the goodness of God we are here all right we are here I, I just want to also give him thanks for you know the wonderful opportunity he gave my husband and I you know to visit one of the outer islands for the very first time we met several friends <laughs> over there I did not realize I knew so many people on Anigada or you know not to <laughs> sound self-important but I did not even know so many people on Anigada knew me you know so it's like walking about and I'm there for the first time and people are like hi sister Diane hi sister. and I'm like oh, who are you again <laughs> you know and these are people some of them have helped one way or another as a matter of fact we went out on a boat yesterday to an area called conk island and the very captain of the boat where they're looking at each other like we recognized each other and he said to me i know you and i said i know you too i just don't remember where came to find out i uh did uh, a passport for him i renewed his passport for him because he's jamaican you know so it's it's just things like that we walked about it was good just to see all that anigada had to offer and i give god thanks i really give god thanks because he made all of that possible and to be honest now it was my trip to anigada that pretty much inspired the topic of today's devotion um, I was sitting on the ferry coming back I was sitting beside my friend and we just got talking about creative ways that we can win people to the Lord because you see we have become so used to doing the same old things and when we look around us it's not really showing up you know so much in terms of longevity because what we do, we do some stuff that we normally do. We preach a sermon and we make an altar call. And by the way, most, most times this is being done within the four walls of a church. And we make an altar call and then we sit back and we just expect people to respond. 
you know, because we made the call, so respond. I preached a good sermon, so respond, you know, and we're coming to understand that times are changing. The message has not changed, but times are changing. The, the message of salvation has not changed because, as you would see today, our, our text, the scripture, it's taken from a very familiar uh, passage in the Bible, and it's Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and it's dubbed the Great Commission. And I just want to say to us today, even from early, friends, let me tell you, once you have come to know the Lord, once somebody was kind enough to share God's word with you, and you responded to that, and you're now a part of what we call the family of God, because you have now forsaken your old ways, and you're now in the family of God, serving him. Let me just submit to us, not to you, to us, because it's a reminder to me as well, that we have a responsibility all right we have a responsibility to share god's word and to be creative even in the way that we do that but i'm coming to realize nowadays that there is a roadblock sometimes to that to getting that done and it starts with a kind of mindset that we have a lot of us believe that in order for us to share christ with others it has to be in a formal way. So first of all, some of us are going to head off to Bible school. You know, some are going to do some sort of training, which training is good. Training is great. I've had some training. I'm not knocking training. But hey, friends, let me tell you. Let me tell you something that everybody has. And not everybody is going to get the opportunity even to start out with formal training. Everybody has a story. Every one of us has a story. The Lord did something for just about all of us. I know that there are some who are not fully committed to Christ, but this will be helpful even to you. All right? This will be helpful even to you because since you are now, you know, taking in all of this that, you know, we're sharing from time to time, you too will become a part of what I'm about to say. Listen, when the Lord has given you a mandate, which I believe that was our mandate, and I'll read it for us, right? We don't need to wait on man, all right, to launch us, to ordain us, to affirm us to approve us yes all of that is good as a matter of fact this is something that i spoke about before and i remember it like yesterday i was on this very same location almost saying the same thing because i'm, I'm seeing it around me there are so many people that want to share god's word but they're waiting for somebody to hand them a microphone or to put them behind a pulpit no friends when god has given you a mandate you do not wait on man and that is not even being said uh you know in any disrespectful kind of way because i do believe in authority i do believe in covering i believe in those things you know i do believe that we need mentors some people believe that they are a law unto themselves and they do their own thing that's not what i'm talking about i would never want to be out there sharing god's word and i don't have a home base I don't necessarily have somebody that I can rely on and say, you know what, I, I, I desire your instruction. I desire your covering in terms of somebody who prays for you and motivates and encourages you. There are times when you don't get that. And like David, we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. But you have some people who believe in this, you know, one man show kind of thing. I'm an evangelist and I'm called to spread the word and I don't need anybody. That's not what I'm saying, friends. I'm simply saying in your own way, in your own corner, share God's word. You know, the best story or the best witness we can have, our lifestyle, our lifestyle. Let us live in such a way that we do not even have to take out a Bible and preach from it because they will see it in our lifestyle. Okay, does that mean that you have to live perfectly? Because some believe that, you know, if you're, you're in, whether you're in the limelight or not, people watching you, right? And some believe that that calls for a level of perfection. No, friends. 
It simply means that you are real, you are transparent. If you fall in any situation, you repent. That's what David did. That's what made him man after God's own heart. It's not so much that he sinned and he did this and that was the highlight. No, it's what he did afterwards that made him a man after God's own heart. Some people, they put the sin he did in front and say, well, you know, David messed up and, you know, he was still called God after man, own, man after God's own heart. That's because he was repentant. So that's what I'm saying now, friends. If you fall, you get up, you brush off and you go with God again. You turn away from that thing so that your witness, that lifestyle that you have for Christ can shine forth. Some people may not like you. They may give you a hard time. They may have all manner of evil to say about you. But guess what? God knows your heart and he knows your story. You have been through some stuff and he helped you through that. And because of that, you have something to give. You have something to share. Stop waiting on man. Stop waiting to be called minister this, right? And prophet this and apostle this. Titles are great. Okay, they're okay. They're fine. But don't sit around waiting for that before you can launch out into God, right? A lot of people too, they worship man so much that what Christ has to say has no bearing on them anymore. And they think that they're obeying God, but they're really obeying man. All right? Man says, don't go, don't do. They're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. Because, you know, I am under authority. Yes, we understand that. But some take the thing too far. They, they take it out of context. And God cannot get the glory from that. Listen, I'm going to read this for you. Some of you are very familiar with the passage already. But let me read it because when I read through it, I, I saw some key words jumping out at me. And I'm like, okay, God, this is truly what you want me to share today. All right, Matthew 28, 18 and 20, verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I read that again. And Jesus, it did not say, and the pastor came to them. And the minister came to them. And the apostle came. No, it said, and Jesus came to them. He was speaking to his disciples and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now in verse 19, he says, go ye therefore. So in other words, all the power that has been given unto me, I am now sharing that with you. I am sending you out with all of that power. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself the question. Okay, so at what point do I stop after Jesus has said go? So Christ said go right and then now i am stopping to wonder if i am qualified if i am worthy if i am up to the mark christ has already given the mandate and i'm stopping to check what man is saying so it's like who do i listen to all right so he says go ye therefore and teach all nations I looked at that word because it appeared twice. Teach. Teach. How do we teach? Because you see, some of the things that I'm seeing nowadays that, you know, that is being taught, I shake my head because a lot of emphasis is being placed on, and yes, I'm going there, on house and land and care. Yeah, prosperity. Now, there's nothing wrong with being prosperous. All of us desire to be prosperous in our lives. Some more than others, I guess. Because you see the greed step in a time and we're not focusing on those things that Jesus asked us to teach. Okay? And we're going to see coming out in there what are really the things that he wants us to teach. So we're getting teaching and all. 
Don't get me wrong, we're getting teaching. But what is the focus of those teachings? What do we hear sometimes, every single time? We go through the church doors because there are some particular churches and ministries. I mean, <laughs> they only talk about one thing all the time. And even in the midst of all of that talk, there are people in the congregation who are yet to see some of the prosperity that they're talking about and they're making it look as if it's the people's fault right when they are building their earthly kingdoms on the backs of these same people all right that's another topic altogether okay go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost all right those instructions are clear to me we have been given a mandate to go to go and to teach all right go and teach then this is what christ says in verse 20 teaching them so this is what we're going to teach teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you remember now jesus was always saying that anything they see him do it's what his father had commanded him to do so that says that jesus did not come of himself doing his own thing but he listened to his father all right and then he's now teaching his disciples how to do the same thing that he did or he was doing so he said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world amen so not only did he commission and he sent out and he said go he said look when you go do this teach and guess what i will be with you so that's it friends that's really what i'm trying to share today that we have received the commission to go we have received the mandate to go let's not wait for man anymore let's stop getting this thing up in our heads that we have to have the biggest of title in order to go no friends go today right as long as the lord keeps his breath in you go tomorrow go next week how do you go you can go from right where you are start with your household all right start there all right so you're not even going too far even though you're going to the nations but i believe charity begins at home start there right teach teach those who are in your household how to observe those things that christ has taught us and then you launch out and everywhere you go, everywhere you go, you tell the good news of Christ. That's the, the good news, the good news of Christ. You tell your story. How did you become a Christian? How did you become saved? That's a story. All right. Everybody has one. And stop waiting around. Stop sitting around. I mean, I used to be in church settings where people fighting over position in church. I say used to because, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if where I am now that's happening. I, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I'm just saying. Right? Fighting and jostling over position in church. Who is the greatest among us? Really? And people are lost and going to hell. And we're fighting over post and position. And who should be the this and the that? And who is the greatest? Really, if it did not work in Christ's day, how do we think that's going to work now? When those two disciples came to him and said, Master, give us, you know, um, this place of honor with you. One to be on the right and one to be on the left. And Christ said, look, that's not for me to give. That's not for me to give. Those positions are for my father. So what we do now, we form our own little kingdom here on earth and we dispense and it's creating a lot of problems. And there are people who are sitting down with their gifts and with their talents waiting for somebody to push them or to say go, go and win the loss. No friends, 
ordinations are good they are wonderful affirmation they are good they are wonderful but i've seen more power come from people who just have a raw story to tell i've seen it okay just tell your story what did god do for you and people will understand that hey if he did it for you he can do it for me don't wait on anybody's pulpit don't wait on anybody's microphone go out there and win the lost live a life that's pleasing unto god remember early i said it's not about perfection it's about being transparent and open unto god because remember we cannot hide anything from him we cannot all right had i gone over anigada thinking that i was in another part of the world nobody knew me so i could just do what i want and carry on with my bad self you know i would have put shame to the name of christ because as i mentioned so many people knew who i was and i'm like okay i'm here for the first time how is that even possible but it just goes to show that it is really our lifestyle that counts how do we live so you faltered yes get up dust off repent turn around and go for god again and watch the way that he uses your life to bless all right i could bet it's miss simone they're laughing at me you know i i, I mean i just feel so or, or, or you know <laughs> i'm just saying but you know god is good friends and i'm so fired up in my spirit you know i was able to attend church over there now anigada is a beautiful place in terms of potential everything is beautiful in its own way some say well it's dry it's this is that but listen all i saw was god's beautiful creation there are churches there the one that i attend well you all know i'm a member of the church of god of prophecy by now if you don't that's it and it's not really about a denomination but i'm saying the one that i attended beautiful church beautiful edifice even after the hurricanes they were able to you know just get stuff repaired beautiful but what because the population on anigada is so small it's about 300 and something well my good friend tasha <laughs> native anigadian <laughs> told me that the population is just over 300 and you know it's a it's a big island with a small population pretty much reminds me of guyana that is this big 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 country but very small population right small in, compared to other places that are way smaller than it that has so many more people but i'm saying you know the the the, the numbers in the in the church was small but i saw nothing but potential you know to win people for christ win people for christ because hey this world is not getting any better all right it's getting worse and this is not doom and gloom this is reality read your bibles friends just read it just pick it up and read it read matthew 24 for example and see if some of those things mentioned are not already happening even as we speak wars rumors of wars earthquakes in diverse places you know it, it, it's it, now is not the time friends to be fighting to be warring with each other to be carrying on with each other we have done enough of that and the lord is now saying now is the time to go and gather his harvest don't let it spoil don't let it stay out there people are dying and they're falling into hell all right by the droves what can we do about it the lord has given us the power to go and snatch people from who are currently dangling over hell all right let's do that let's let's do god's mandate let's not wait on man yes it will be good to get backative and support all of that is great remember i said that in the beginning that that is all of that is good but if some people if that's what you're waiting for you may never get it all right you may never get it so it's time to go it's time to go just go and win god's people pull them into the kingdom how do we do it i said with our lifestyle with our stories you know, with our testimonies, those things that the Lord has done. I shared a, a, a brief testimony with the congregation on Sunday. 
didn't realize that as a result of the testimony I gave, it blessed one of the gentlemen that, you know, was a part of our group from Tortola, that it caused him to open up and share his. And as a result of that, you know, he got the, the strength that he needed for what he was facing and what he was going through. And that's what I'm saying. Friends, you just never know who your story will touch. Some people may say, you know, I'm private. I don't want anybody in my business and I don't want to share nothing. That's okay. Share what you can. All right. But it's also good to be as open as you can be because that's what will reach the heart of people. When we gloss over our stories and try to make it sound, you know, wonderful. If it bad, it was just bad. Just share it. I'm just saying because it's when we try to fix it and to make it <laughs> airworthy that we sometimes spoil the truth of the story that is really to help somebody. Okay, friends? So today, that's my encouragement to us. All right? Right down on the 6.30, almost there, Mark. Just want to encourage you not to wait around anymore. Get on out there and share. Win people to Christ. Lifestyle. Stories. Testimonies. Testimonies of healing. Testimonies of God's supernatural provision. Those are the kind of things that the Lord has given us to use. Alright? Don't look at the people around you as, well, you know, <laughs> they're just wicked and bad and they're on their way to hell anyway and there's nothing that I can do to change any of that no friends you plant the seed and you leave what happens next to God as his Holy Spirit draws them to him because remember we're not the ones saving anybody we can't save anybody we can only do what God says do what Christ says teach baptize Right? So what we're doing, we're creating even more disciples as we go along. We are duplicating. We are continuing with the process. If the process wasn't continued from long ago, we would not be a part of the family of God today. If somebody had just dropped the ball and said, you know what, I'm not going to teach this anymore, we would not have heard the good news. So let's not keep it to ourselves. Know that we have heard it. And for those who have not yet made that commitment, right? Listen, it is just a matter of you surrendering to Christ. You may say to me, Sister Diane, it's not that easy because I'm facing this, I'm facing that, I'm handling this, I'm, you know, all of that. I, I know, I know about the, the, the different things that are present in people's lives that tend to prevent them. But look at it this way. If today was to be your last, how would you, and this is not to frighten anybody, how would you want, or where do you think you would go? Because some say, you know, I'm a good person. I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't cheat, I don't, I don't. And they're naming out the sins, right? But if you have not said yes to Christ, it does not matter how good you are or how good you label yourself yes you may be a wonderful person well loved well admired even called upright again because of the stuff that you say you're not involved in but if you have not said yes to Christ alright that's the important part must say yes say father I surrender all right, so now I want to pray, and I want to pray that prayer first. So if you know you need to make that commitment, but something is hindering you, say this prayer. It's a simple prayer. Maybe not even one you would have heard in Sunday school, but I'm just saying, right? Trust God to work on your heart. Work on your heart, because that's where it really starts. It's a hard thing. It's not about <laughs> what some people think it's about because some people can look a certain way, sound a certain way, and them heart dirty. Y'all know that that is a fact. I am not saying anything out of the way. There are a lot of people around us. They look good. They sound good. 
But them heart no right. Some of them bad minded. But they are praising God and they're declaring that they're Christians. But my Bible says they and they, the world, will know that we are Christians by our love. So if we're not loving and if we're not doing all of that, we're just wasting our time. We're not fooling anybody. All right? So pray this prayer with me and just mean it. Mean it. Just say, Father, I've been praying these prayers all the time, but there seems to be no change. You have to be the one to pray with the understanding and to surrender totally and completely to Christ. Total surrender. All right, so let's pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today another time knowing, oh God, that you are the one that died for me, that died for my sins, those sins that I have committed, those sins that are burdening even my life. And today, Lord, I surrender. I surrender my life to you, knowing that I cannot change myself. I cannot fix myself. I cannot save myself. So I'm relying on you, Lord, for that change. I am surrendering my life to you so that you can turn my life around. So I'm giving it up to you, Father, today, today, because now, is the accepted time father I thank you now for coming into my heart for coming into my life for causing that change and that transformation to come to take place so that I too can go on out and win the lost I too will have a story a testimony to share with those around me who do not know you let my life be a living testimony to those who do not know you. Father, I leave everything now in your capable hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer and you mean it, nothing fancy. If you prayed that and you mean it, and you believe with all of your heart that Christ can do what you asked him to do, which was to come into your heart and come into your life and to save you. You are saved. The word of God says, once you believe, believe upon Christ, believe upon his name, you are saved. All right? And I just want to pray now for everybody else, you know, who are saying to themselves, you know, I've not really been a good witness. I've been a Christian now for many years and there are people around me who hardly even know that I'm a Christian. And listen friends, it's not so much about announcing that you are a Christian. It's about your lifestyle. How do you live? Some people are afraid to live out loud live out loud for Christ because you know they don't want anybody to think and say anything in the event they make a mistake here or they make one there listen friends when you're living for God remember earlier I mentioned the story of you know how why David was referred to as man after God's own heart it's because he was repentant there are some people who are very hard they're callous and they do what they want and they have no remorse you know and they just go about their lives even saying that they're Christians but let it be that you have made up your mind today that something is going to change about the way that you go about living your life for Christ you're gonna tell others about him because the times are short the times are short there is so much that's going on now I don't need to name them out you all you know watch the news listen to the news at some point and you know that things are not kosher right I was shocked 
while I was in Anigada, I was shocked because I made a post and I posted some pictures of, you know, the scenery I saw as soon as I woke up. And I made a post that I had, <laughs> I, I, I was awoken from a dream which I, which I considered a nightmare of a mass shooting. And in the post that I made, I mentioned the word shots, but I was referring to the pictures. And then the Lord just brought it to my spirit very strongly that this dream you had is very significant. And I'm like, okay, God. So I just made the post, posted the pictures, only to find out that there was indeed a mass shooting earlier that morning in Nassau, Bahamas, where up to the time that I read the story, 14 people were shot, uh, not fatally, you know, none died. 17 injured overall but 14 were shot in Nassau Bahamas this is a place that I've visited this is a place that I'm going all being well this summer have friends there you understand and I'm saying look at the times that we're living in look at this so we don't have time to waste friends don't say it cannot happen where you are because you know where I live is quiet no, the devil is on a rampage. So it's time for us to get into the covering of God. Let's just ask the Lord to help us. Father, I give you thanks today. I bless your name, O God. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy towards us. Your grace that has been extended to us time and time again, O God. Help us not to be ungrateful or to take your mercy for granted. We get up every day and we're breathing some of us have jobs that we can go to, albeit some are not even happy in their jobs. But Lord, we just want to say to you, thank you. Help us not to become so engrossed in ourselves, oh God, that we think that it's all about us all the time. But help us to understand, Father, that it's all about you. Our lives are all about you. Help us to share your word to share the good news everywhere we go. Help us not to just keep it to ourselves while those around us perish and go to hell. Help us to care. Help us to become compassionate. Give us a heart, O oh God, that cares about those who do not know you. They may be our family, our immediate family. They may be those that we interact with at work. Lord, even those that we do not even consider at times. Help us, O oh God, to see that they need you and to share the good news about you with them. Lord, help us to turn this thing around and not to wait on man when you have already given us a mandate. You have already said to us, go. Lord, help us not to be making plans and plans after plans to go, but they never come to fruition. Help us to just go, mighty God. Help us, Father, to understand that the times are perilous. They are crucial times. And people need you now more than ever. People need you now, O oh God, more than ever. So help us, Father to take our responsibility to share your word, share the good news seriously because the time is short. Lord, your word even says that you would shorten the time for the elect's sake. So Lord, you're looking out even for those who have already said yes to you. Lord, this month, the month of July, Lord, we're seeing so many reports weather reports of what to expect in this month but help us oh god to look to you and not just to look to you because we are afraid of what nature will bring to us or what the weather will bring or what will happen but to look to you oh god because you are the author and the finisher of our faith the work that you began in us you're more than able to complete it so help us not to be fearful or worrisome or become overly concerned, but to trust you. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. 
So Lord, we thank you today and we bless your holy name. Do for us, O oh God, more than we can even ask or think. That's always my prayer, Lord, because you know what we need more than even we know. So I thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Friends, our time is up. <laughs> our time is up. But just remember, right, that you have already been commissioned to go. Don't wait on anything else. Don't wait on some special thing to happen before you go. Yes, you may be working towards all the other things that comes with ministry. It's okay. I'm, I, I, I wasn't even knocking training because it's important. I believe in it. But long before you get into that formal training session, you spread God's word according to your testimonies, according to your stories, according to how you got saved, according to what the Lord has done for you. All right, start there. And then, you know, you can finish up Bible school or go to Bible school. I went to Bible school, but, you know, my testimonies came first. The Lord did stuff for me that I shared with others to bless them. You never know how much your story will bless somebody. And that is what the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you today. To share because he has already given you the mandate. All right? Don't go back in church, go fight for anything. The Lord gave you a unique story. Share that. And then, of course, your gifts and your talents. When you put it all together, it would only give glory to God. All right, friends. So, good morning again to all of you. Every one of you that take the time to join us every day join us from all over some are from st vincent grenada trinidad jamaica usa canada there's some uh, a lady in an on an island even in the uk that joins in from time to time when she's able to get the 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 um the connection so i know that you're from all over and i give god thanks for you all of you all right those who are in the bvi those who are in the USBI, I give God thanks for you, you know, because you, you make uh, this a part of what God is doing in this time. Those of you from Dominica, yes, I know Miss Kerry is from Dominica, you know, from all over. May the Lord bless you. And of course, how can I forget those who are from Anigada? Well, you're part of BVI, but I have to give a special shout out because <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, so many people on Anigada, they know about these devotions or they know about, you know, um, the things that I do from time to time. So may the Lord bless you. Special good morning to my very good friend over there, Miss Tasha Van Tapool, you know, who treated us like royalty. She just really made it special for us. Every aspect of, of the whole trip, the whole visit, she just saw to it that we were well taken care of from the moment we got off that ferry till when she dropped us back at the ferry, you know. And I tell you, the Lord has these people set up all over, all over just to take care of his people or he gives us the ability to take care of one another so i'm going back to anigada who is coming <laughs> i look in company i mean i really loved it over there so i plan to go back so wherever you are in bvi if you have never been like me you know it was my first time please do make plans to go it's a beautiful place really love it uh tasha shared with me that it has uh, over 21 miles of uninterrupted beach some of which she took us to see I was hoping to see the pink flamingos up close but when we went to the pond where they were they were on the other side and when we left that area they came back to the pond and you know we saw them through uh, like uh, you know those things that you used to see things far or telescope whatever it is <laughs> right beautiful pink flamingos beautiful you know so a lot of stuff but to god be the glory all right so friends you take care have a blessed week have a powerful week 
have a productive week make sure that you get your work done all right don't waste the boss time don't be sitting at your desk reading bible when you should be working i know some of we christian can go on you know like we save than everybody else and when the boss work should be doing we sit there reading bible no that's not how you're gonna win your co-workers <laughs> do the boss work do the hours that he's paying you for right and in between your lunch time or whatever you can read up your bible some people get upset christians get upset because their boss requires them to actually do their work come on one of these days we're just gonna have a talk about those things all right our witness is not just what we say it's what we do all right don't take the boss things don't carry home the people them stationary right such were some of us truth be told yes you know read between the lines listen we can never be so saved right that we can't tell the truth and shame the devil you understand tell the truth and shame the devil man all right these are the kind of things that makes us real some of us pretend and go on like say we say we're born right on the church pews and we save from we drop out our mother belly no we had to go through a process okay so friends i love you each of you god bless you all of you and until we meet again in this fashion do take care all right take in the beauty of the lord do not take anything for granted okay love people pray for them think the best about them right don't harbor evil and ill will and resentment just love people all when them not love you back just love them some of them you have to love them from a distance but you know because if you go too close they will kill you <laughs> all right who no no but i'm saying just love love people even some of them might think you don't like them because you're not up in the face talking up to them god knows your heart all right god knows your heart and until we meet again take care miss simone and miss wani you all behave okay behave I'm meeting you back here tomorrow, same time, all being well. And I hope to see the two of you especially behaving. All right. God bless you all. Take care.